The skin on the inside of the arm is innervated by two small nerves, the intercostal brachial and the medial brachial cutaneous nerve. There are several reasons to want to block these, and in this video we'll go over the anatomy, sonoanatomy, and approaches to blocking these two nerves. When we're performing a brachial plexus block for upper limb surgery, like a supra or infraclavicular, you can expect to get this pattern of skin numbness, everything on the upper limb except this part of the medial arm here. This is innervated by the intercostal brachial nerve, which is not part of the brachial plexus. It originates from the lateral branch of T2 on the chest wall, enters the axilla, crosses over the conjoint tendon subcutaneously, and then terminates by innervating the posterior medial skin of the arm. Okay, so big deal, right? Do we even need that? Well, maybe. There are orthopedic, vascular, and plastic surgical procedures that invade that territory, and knowing how to block that nerve quickly and easily is better than having a surgeon repeatedly infiltrate the skin on a squirming patient in the middle of an AV fistula creation. Or maybe you just want a pain-free tattoo on your inner bicep. By the way, there's a belief out there that intercostal brachial is helpful for tourniquet pain. This is probably not a thing. Tourniquet pain has much more to do with innervation of deep structures like periosteum and muscular fascia than the skin, provided there's appropriate padding under the cuff. There's something else to consider. The medial brachial cutaneous nerve, aka the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm, a branch of the medial cord, travels down the arm to innervate the distal portion of the posterior medial arm to about the elbow. When we perform an axillary brachial plexus block, this nerve is often spared as it may already have left the neurovascular bundle and can be found superficial to the brachial fascia. If you want to cover that zone when performing an axillary brachial plexus block, it's a good idea to target this nerve separately. So here's how we think of those two nerves and their contributions to arm innervation. In actuality, these two nerves branch extensively and are frequently interconnected, so much so that it's more practical to consider this whole zone as being innervated by both the intercostal brachial and the medial cutaneous brachial nerves. Doing nerve blocks all day is a good workout, let me tell you. We can actually block these two nerves together, safely and easily, in one go. Now there are two techniques to do this. Both use the same positioning with the arm abducted to 90 degrees. A common method is just to infiltrate the subcutaneous region of the axilla with 5 to 10 mils of local. We'll start just superficial to the axillary artery and make sure to infiltrate down to about where the arm meets the bed. Now in this study, this group compared the landmark approach to an ultrasound guided approach. You can see here in the left that both nerves should lie above the conjoint tendon, about two to three centimeters posterior to the axillary artery. When the authors could see the nerves on ultrasound, they targeted them. If not, they just did an ultrasound guided infiltration in that space with five mils. Turns out the landmark method is not all that effective. Ultrasound guidance led to a significantly higher incidence of complete blockade. And for that reason, this is our favored technique. It is possible to see the nerves in many patients, as this group pointed out. Here are two branches of the intercostal brachial lying just where we'd expect them to be over the conjoint tendon. To do this block, we'll put a probe in the axilla over the artery and then slide it down toward the bed to image that subcutaneous space over lat dorsi and teres major. The needle will come in plane from the anterior aspect. Here are two examples of blocking a visible nerve in that space. If we can see the nerves in the sub-Q fat, it's fun to go after them. They look like little hyperechoic raspberries lying just on top of the fascia. The problem is because there can be lots of branching, you never know if you've blocked every branch. And for that reason, our recommended approach is to use ultrasound guidance to image the correct plane and then infiltrate using 5 mils of local anesthetic. Here's what that looks like. The needle is advanced over the axillary artery and vein and the subcutaneous fat above the conjoint tendon infiltrated. You should aim to get at least 2-3 to three centimeters posterior to the artery to ensure blocking all the branches. Alright, cool. Easy enough. Does that work? Sure thing. This is what we get in volunteers when doing this ultrasound guided infiltration. Clearly we get both the intercostal brachial and the medial brachial cutaneous nerve, and you can appreciate that it's a broad enough territory that it's worth blocking for many arm procedures. Are there other ways to block the intercostal brachial nerve? Sure, you could do an injection at T2, like a PEX2 block, and there are times when this is convenient, but in most cases it seems like overkill. The ultrasound guided technique is simple and effective, and works to supplement your brachial plexus block when you need it.